Hi everyone, welcome back to Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD 100% walkthrough with me, Austin John Place. We are almost done with the game. We got like three areas left, okay. So far we are at 23 pieces of heart, we're getting the last one this episode. 25 goddess cubes, we're getting the last two this episode. 25 goddess chests, we are opening the last two this episode. 70 gratitude crystals, we're getting the last 10 this episode. We already completed the medallions and we are getting our final heart this episode. And this one is going gonna be a doozy yes it is i don't know the runtime of this of this video because i just started recording but i'm telling you now it's gonna be a doozy i'm gonna be cutting a lot of things out because we gotta keep this under uh, we have to keep this a reasonable time this episode i personally need to get a few bird feathers to upgrade my shield because it's not the best shield possible and we're pretty much done with the game although when i'm done with this episode i may have a better shield anyways in this episode, we're going to go to Farring, and then we're going to go to Elden, and then we're going to go to Lineru, and we're going to do a big thing in all three of the things. Upon approaching Farron, there's an unusual phenomenon that does not allow us to land anywhere except for, uh, by the temple. So I guess we're going to the temple. Back here at the sealed grounds, we're going to head outside. Hey, we're going to be greeted by Groos, and he says the beast is about to break out again. Get into position. I did not save the game. I always want to save the game before I do one of these battles. For the record, I always save before these battles because I know that if you lose the battle, you have the option to continue or load from a previous save. And it was a thing in Zelda games that if you had one death or one game over on your save file, there was actually a counter of the amount of times that you died. I think they got to wait. I think they, they no longer do that. But I don't know, it's just a mentality that's been engraved in me, so it's just something that I do. All right, I hope you guys are ready for the third and final fight of the Imprisoned, which uh, I've actually been looking over strategies on optimizing this battle and to do it with no damage because this was a battle that I had trouble with. So now the strategy that I'm going to be going with, Goose is going to say, hey, I'm here to help. Cool. We are going to run forward. And we're going to get in the first available airstream. Getting in the first available airstream. And then immediately going to Groose. Who's then going to shoot a bomb at him. Stunning him. And I failed that. I failed that horribly. Okay, great. Good job, Austin. Okay, let's try the exact same thing again. It did make it up a little bit further this time. We're going to shoot a bomb. We're going to make sure that we are lined up properly before we hop off. We are lined up properly this time. It's a little hard to see with the big main. We're going to knock this in. And then his main is going to become this big old halo of evilness and is going to start floating upward for an immediate victory. And now it's going to be necessary for Groos to, excuse me, boop. Hit him. Hit him anywhere on the body, and he's going to fall very hard, very fast. And he falls down to the middle. So now we are going to make our way down to the middle. Am I at the head or the foot? I'm at the foot. Okay, so this should be the head. No, I was at the head. Where was the spike? I didn't even see the spike anywhere. Oh, I was next to the spike the whole time. Fantastic. That's going to be the second of three hits. He's going to push it all on out again. He's going to grow his halo again, and he's going to fly up immediately, right? And Groose is going to be like, oh no, when he fell really hard, then uh, he destroyed this thing, and now I can't get to my bombs. So now I recommend pulling up your map so you actually see where you are in reference to getting up to the top. We need to fly up to Groose as fast as possible. You're going to be able to see the imprison on the left-hand side floating up as well. Grab a heart here if you need, but you shouldn't with this strategy. The bombs are going to be blocked off, so instead, we're going to come up here. We're going to get in. We're going to aim for his head. I'm going to shoot Link on top of it. And boom, boom, boom. Congratulations, you won the battle with zero damage. No bombs, no arrows, no hitting toes or fingers or anything. Just straight optimized 0% damage. But just like last time, all that's gonna go to the middle. We're gonna do a sword swipe. It's gonna be put back into the ground. There's gonna be triumphant music and we're going to keep going. 
Uh, we're going to be here and Granny's going to be like, hey, are you actually close to discovering the Triforce? Yes. You must seek out the three dragons. Yes. I mean, we need to go to the Farron Woods, except now it's completely flooded. Oh no. Including the gate leading to the woods, it's locked. And Goose is like, hey, I have a good idea. We're going to use the Grusinator to give you a lift. So that's what we're going to go do now. Oh, while I'm here, I need these birds. No, 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 you get back here. I think I need like two or three bird feathers for this goddess uh, shield. Also, I know at a certain point in the game, you start to get uh, bluebirds spawning here. I don't know when that point in the game is because I've yet to see it. Now that I have my appropriate amount of bird feathers, we're gonna come over here, talk to Groose, and he's gonna say, hey, just hop on in there, okay, no problem. With my machine, the woods are just a fling away. We and Kerblunk. <laughs> the three beacons of where the goddess cubes were are still here. And you might think to yourself, Austin, how could this entire forest possibly be flooded? It's almost like there's a water dragon that resides over the area or something, right? Hey, Bucha, it seems like whenever something is going on, you're you're right in the middle of it, kind of like Harry Potter. It's good to see you again. Yes, things look a bit different here. Water came gushing out of the base of the tree. Okay, so let's go to the base of the tree. Uh, this entire area is going to be underwater, so you're probably gonna keep putting only controls on for the entire area. Oh snap, it's a water dragon. Who could have predicted this? Hi, Farron. Oh, I remember you. You're the young human who helped me recover from my injuries some time ago. Yep, sure am. Let's have a look at you. Yes, you seem a good deal stronger than the last time we met. And look at that sword. You're the real thing, boy. It's clear you have a spirit of a hero of the goddess. I think I messed up that sentence, but you get the point. Let me guess, you swam all the way here trying to get me to teach you the song of the hero. No, a final test is in order. I decided I had enough with all these monsters here, so I flooded every single inch of here. She is going to present us with the song, except the song is going to be broken into tiny little parts, which are called... Tadtones. Yes, these tiny little tadpoles that are in the shape of actual music notes are going to be all throughout the waters. If you haven't already guessed, here's your task. Take this score and collect all my little musical friends out there. You can use the score to figure out how many tad tones are in each group, find them, collect them, and bring them back to me. This is regarded as one of the just worst parts of the game. Anyways, there's going to be a map on screen here that's going to be from Zelda Dungeon once again, because they have all the maps, and it's going to have every single one of the various tad tones so if you just want to do that go for it but if you want to follow the path that i'm taking no problem anyways i'm going to be ascending the tree now because there is one tad tone that requires us to jump on a lily pad to invert it and i believe it's this one right here yep this looks right and boom, that will free the yellow one. I'm first gonna be getting these four on this half of the tree, starting off with the yellow one that we just freed, who's going to be just swimming around right below here. If you do the spin attack, it will actually draw them closer, which makes it a little bit easier for you. There's going to be a ring of light blue ones. In order to get it, just spin right through the middle of them. Oh, I have to say, doing doing the, the button controls for this, so much easier than the motion controls. Okay, underneath here, there's gonna be a bunch of these little pink ones. And if you don't get them all fast enough, they're going to swim away and reset. That is another part of the challenge. There are four in total. After you get all four, you are good. And then there's gonna be one lone red one over here. Next, I'm gonna be getting this one. There's the yellow ones here, the light blue ones here, the purple ones here, and the fuchsia ones here. I'm also going to be getting this green one up here. Starting off with this light blue one that's right underneath here, right by these pricklies. Ow, where did he go? That started in the middle of that and I scared him out before and then I got exploded. And then after he ran out, he started circling it, but that's fine, that's the light blue one that I wanted to get right there. Next, continuing straight ahead, I am gonna be coming across some yellow ones. I believe they are a ring. And I think they're, yep, they're much higher up. Again, you just wanna spin through the middle. 
We're going to head down to where you see the water bubbles and the poison bubbles next to each other. There's going to be a lone purple by himself. There's going to be a purple one in this patch of grass. And then across the path, the other patch of grass. You have to get them in quick succession. So I recommend lining up and doing two consecutive. After you get a few, uh, these guys are going to start showing up. But anyways, they don't pose that much of a threat. I mean... They were never really a threat. They're just more of a slight inconvenience than anything else. Also, by right where I am, there's going to be a small school of these light blue ones who are swimming around everywhere. And they appear right there on the map. Now I'm going to be heading to the north area over here where, where the, the walking water was and getting these pink ones and the solo green one. Oh, I can swim underwater. I mean, I could like crawl swim underwater. That's that's really strange. Oh, I've done I've done that before back in the in the Skyview temple. Okay, all four of the red ones, like I mentioned. And on top of here, we're going to have to Z target this guy. And we need to now we need to him for to respawn. I'm going to be a little bit closer to the vines now. I feel like that might help my strategy out here. Got him. I want to get his air bubble. Let's grab this lime boy who's just swimming away. Come back here. Got him. Now there are seven more groups that we have to get. There's going to be a bunch of lime green ones here. And then there's going to be some pink ones here. And then there's a whole long path of purple ones along here. So let's start with getting these closest guys. You're going to see a few lime boys hanging out by this cave. Uh, there's a total of all of them. You got, got him. Perfect. And it ends with the air bubble. I guess I could have started with the air bubble. Either way, we're fine. Since I'm right here, I might as well go for this long streak all the way through here, which is going to lead me out. Thankfully, it starts with the air bubbles because I will need them. Come on, purple boys. You definitely want to watch out for the purple air bubbles as you could pretty much imagine those are bad air bubbles this is definitely one of the more annoying ones especially if you didn't spin at the right time and you missed one. Oh, what's up bucha oh he wants me to come chat with him so that we can douse for these guys um, I just happen to know where all they are so I don't even need to douse for him now we're gonna head to the southernmost area for these purple ones. Excuse me, mister, I would like to breathe, please. Thanks. Right at the southernmost area, you're gonna be finding a school of four fuchsia ones. I'm gonna be heading to these two, and I believe there's a purple and a group of yellows that are all just kind of chilling together. The purple, I believe, is in the top of this tree, and the yellows are underneath it. Where's this purple one? Got gotcha. you. Yep, right in the middle of the tree. Heading to the lower area. Yep, here are the yellow ones. Be sure to avoid all the explosions. And the last group is just going to be over to the right. This is where we fought, I believe, our first Bokoblin captain. Yep, and it's just a whole bunch of purple ones all in a circle. Two left, and we're good. And now we get to hear the song. Cause I swear I could fly. Can't you feel my heart beat fast? I want this to last. I need you by my side. Cause every time we touch, I get this feeling. Oh, Austin J, you gathered all the tad tones. Let's go talk to the water dragon. Great idea, guy. Ah, you brought back all my colorful little tad tones. You're indeed worthy of being called a hero. Why? Because I did some spins in the water with one of your scales? I guess that really makes me a hero, doesn't it? You learned part of the song of the hero. That's neat. 
Farron is then going to pull the plug on all of the water. And now we have bluebirds. I think now they start spawning. Now there is a side quest that we can do that involves coming here and we get five grab to two crackles and we have two more areas to visit and one of the other two areas after we clear it is also going to give us the ability to do a side quest that gets us the last five grab to two crackles so we're just going to do those in a combo now uh i mean i'm just going to take a personal detour because i got the bird feathers i needed and now i am going to upgrade my goddess shield that's it I just got my shield, and if you did or didn't, whatever. Uh, now we're gonna make our way to Elden, but as we're landing, there's gonna be a huge volcanic eruption, which I'm pretty sure is not a safe place to be, like at all, like pretty much instant death for everything nearby. And Link awakens injured in jail, Bokoblin jail. I have two hearts. That's not a lot. Are there hearts in here? There are hearts in here. Nice. And going to go pick up this barrel. Oh, hey, it's Platts. He was the guy in the top of the volcanic ascension that we had to catch at the very end. Remember? I'm here to save the day. Yep, long time no see. Don't tell me you forgot my ugly mug. Anyways, you're pretty fearless. What are you up to now? Well, the the dragon? You mean the dragon god thing? Uh, yeah, I heard a rumor that a big dragon god lives in this mountain. Platz is gonna be the MVP and bring us our mitts. Not the master sword or anything helpful. Literally just the thing that lets us dig. Uh, I have so many hearts that now I'm gonna hear the low heart sound during this. No thanks. And if you take a second, you're gonna realize that you have none of your accessory pouch. None of your weapons, literally nothing. Just your clothes, not even your sword, no shields. Uh, well, we just found some nuts. Oh, and a stool. Make sure you sit down and recover your hearts. It should also be noted that because you do not have your adventure pouch, you're not going to have your extra two hearts at the end. So instead of 19, you're only going to have 17. If a Bokoblin spots you at any time, then they're gonna throw you back in Bokoblin jail. Anyways, feel free if you wanna save. You cannot fast travel because you do not have the goddess sword. There's going to be a block right here that you cannot go through. Oh, hey Platts, you shouldn't be out here in the open with no way to defend yourself. This place is crawling with thugs. Just be careful they don't spot you while you're sneaking around. Hope you're a fan of Metal Gear Solid. Because we're going to be doing a lot of sneaking around, dog. Oh, and he gave us the map and showed us where all the treasures are. That's neat. And told us what's in the treasures. We have our claw shots. We have the gust bellows. We have the whip. Uh, we have the scatter shot. And we have our bomb bag. Okay, well that's, that's somewhat helpful. So this entire area, uh, I mean, it looks complicated and things have changed and things have moved around. But honestly, it's kind of linear. Like there's generally only one solution to most of these things. First, we're going to be hopping up. We're going to be seeing a Bokoblin over there. And we have now come to the conclusion that we need to wait for the right time, run past him, and then hop down to the left. Because, you know, definitely can't see me through this barb through the through this cage right here. Oh, we also can't defeat those. Oh, but we have a burrow spot. Perfect. Down here is going to be a very simple little burrow area to make your way through. Once we emerge on the other side, we have only one way that we could go. And we hop up. We could see some vocablins up there. <sighs> These choo-choos are annoying, and I have no way to defeat them right now. Then it kind of pauses you and it shows you that there is a large spotlight tower. There's two burrow spots and a treasure chest on the other side. If you go into the spotlight, you are then caught by the spotlight. So we're going to be entering the burrow spot. And you actually don't need to face this beetle. You can just run past him. Emerging out on the other side, we're going to hop up and up and inside of this chest. We get the gust bellows back. We have now remembered how to blow things, and that's the only thing that we can do, which is gonna clear a few passages for us, which is nice, you know, being able to, to progress around and stuff. We're gonna be heading up this way in that same path that we went previously for that piece of heart, and we can see a, another area with bokoblins. These two are on patrol. There's going to be many opportunities to run past. 
And after we progress through the area, we burrow through, and then there's a treasure chest where the piece of heart was. Once the Bokoblin is no longer be going to be facing you, you can enter, recover some hearts if you want. Hiding to the outside of this, you should be able to hide from both Bokoblins. Once this guy stops, we're just going to run behind him and burrow. Once we emerge, treasure chest, and we get the claw shots back. Neat. You'll probably notice all the pea hats in the air now, and we are going to be taking the pea hat path. Can I just hit him? Ha, uh, I can. He doesn't know it doesn't do anything about it. Loser. Making our way to the end of the pea hats, we're gonna be grabbing onto these vines. With the two ways that we would normally leave here being blocked off and no nothing to catch these ladybugs with, we are just going to be heading this way which previously that area was inaccessible, but now we could hop on top of the magma things. Or the, 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 the stone? I mean, technically, if I'm putting water inside of lava, it should be obsidian. That's how I get to the nether. And this is just a nice little area where you can rest. Also, I don't think they took your harp. They did not take your harp. And this stone says a dragon is said to live at the peak of the volcano. You're nowhere near the peak, though. Do you want to hear that again? No. Rumor has it you're some kind of genius that remembers things perfectly the first time you hear them. <laughs> I think that's hysterical, and I think it's a running joke with all of the gossip stones in this volcano. Up here is a nice little recovery area. Since you don't have your sword, you could just claw shot these pots. I don't know if there's a real reason to. Not really. Just more of an item recovery. Upon leaving the inside of the volcano area, we're going to be taking one of these rocks, and we're going to be riding it down the lava river a little bit. It's going to be a nice place for us to undock at, and we shall. There's a Bokoblin on patrol. And we see a pea hat on the other side of the gate. Well, that's neat. After he passes, you can take out the claw shot. Grab onto the vines. And you're going to have access to these bombs. Now, we're going to pick one up and commit some domestic terrorism. And then once this tower goes down, we're going to be able to redeem this treasure chest. Nice. We got our whip back to where the bombs were located with the whip out. We're going to be able to grab the pea hat that will then cause it to fly up and we can use our claw shot on it. Here's a save statue if you'd like. Now we're going to use these bombs to take care of these two giant rocks and take this all the way upward. If we head to the right, we're going to see our digging friend over here. And he's going to say there's one of the most amazing treasures in the world just up ahead. But we can't access it until we have our bomb bag. So we're going to be heading over this small bridge and heading back out to the Bokoblin camp. As soon as we enter this area, there's a little animation showing off to the side. So now we're going to be heading down this ramp. And we're going to be taking this rock all the way down. We see that there's a, uh, a little Bokoblin tower. He's hiding a chest, and over here's some bombs. Guess what we're gonna do again? That's right, domestic terrorism. We're gonna grab a bomb, hop across, throw it. Feel free to hop after the light, and we're gonna open this up for the scatter shot. Scatter shot, and we have five seeds. That's not too helpful. What happened to the Bokoblin? That was weird. Anyways, to make our way back up, we're going to be taking these claw shots out and taking the pea hats back up. Now that we're back at the Bokoblin base, you're going to be seeing this Bokoblin and we are just going to pelt him with Deku seeds. Deku seeds, sorry. And watch out for these Choo Choo who are going to spawn in. We want to take this outside path, hit this Bokoblin. You have a very limited amount of time, hide behind the fence. If you need more ammo, feel free to dig in the digging spot right here. But we're going to shoot this guy up here. We're going to go into the digging spot that was in the middle of the searchlight, which is just another little underground area. When you emerge, there's going to be a treasure chest here. And this is our bomb bag back. Beautiful. And now we have a gust to bring us to the upper area. And we can refill some bombs. You do not have your extended bomb bag, so if you were able to hold 35, it is now only 10. Might as well uh, take out the competition. Am I right? Did he just uh, try to attack a bomb in midair? I believe he did. Feel free to actually take out the bad guys here. Now that we have our bomb bag, I want to head into this cave, which we could have before, but you do need your bomb bag in order to uh, actually explore it fully. And it's just another area. Nice little inside a volcano area. 
This gossip stone says the word going around is that a dragon wrapped in flames lives atop the volcano. The thing is, he is it so easy to visit. He's made his lair somewhere so hot that normal folks can't bother him. Do you want to hear that again? I'm going to say yes. Oh, he just says it again, and then I choose no. Rumor has it you're some kind of genius that remembers things perfectly the first time you hear them. And up here, we're just gonna put down a bomb. And up here is gonna be an area to refill some bombs. Gonna be handy, because we just used some bombs to enter here. And some pots up here as well. You obviously can't get the fairy right now in a bottle, but that is six hearts. Exiting the cave, there's gonna be a while until the rock comes, and now that we have cleared out all of the chests, now we're gonna be able to enter the hottest part of the volcano again, because those bokoblins did not take off our earrings. Silly billies, they didn't even think to look there. What I don't get is, you visually have the adventure pouch on you, but they take your adventure pouch away, which is so weird. So I don't get that at all. Let's backtrack to the volcano ascension area. Now with our bomb bag back, we could get rid of these pieces of rock and we're going to head inside of the volcano. And straight ahead of us, boom, master sword. Removing our sword from the ground, we got the true master sword back. And Fee's here, too. Please excuse me for leaving your side during this brief trouble with the volcanic eruption. Over here is going to be a save statue, a couple bokoblins down there, some keys, and a treasure chest. But we are going to be heading to this big old open room where this goddess cube is just hanging out. I think this is the last one or next to last one in the game. With the cursed frogs, be sure to blow them up. I think we can reach it here. Yeah, we can. Really goes to show the range on this bad boy. I thought I had to jump on the rock and then charge it up and then hit it. Kind of like uh, how the minecart was in Lanayru. We're now gonna be taking this to the staircase. And before we enter that building, which you can't even do anything in there yet, we are going to be heading up here. Hop down off of the side, you're gonna see some plants. We need to stab one. Walk it over, get up to the edge of the land. We're gonna throw this into the lava to make some obsidian. Run over. This dump dumps us in this fun little gauntlet here, but you could just ignore everyone and open your treasure chest. You now get your adventure pouch back. From here, it should be easy to defeat everyone and everything. Now we're gonna climb up here. Climb up once again. And up here, we could just toss down a bomb or place it. After those rocks explode, we can now head back to the main room that we were just in with the bird statue. And we're gonna be taking a floating rock into that building over there. Inside of here is a gate. We can cut this one. We need to use the beetle for the other two. With the gate fully open, we're now able to proceed. This is the fire dragon, Elden. Ho, oh, a man of flesh and blood has walked his way into the heart of my burning hall. Now this is something. Even though Farron has seen you a bunch of times, this is the guy's first time ever meeting you. If I have the right of it, the mark you bear upon your hand is not just a fashionable decoration. There can be no doubt about it then. The goddess has chosen you to hear the melody I have guarded for all these years. Well then, human child, I will sing my part of the song of the hero. Now this is what I don't get, right? Hear me out. Farron was all like, oh, you did, you helped me out and then you defeated Girahim, and then you also rid my entire woods of all the monsters that I wanted to be gone, overcome several of my challenges. Only then do I consider you worthy to hear this song. And this guy's like, yo, I ain't seen anybody in a while. You wanna learn a song? And now Elden reverts back to the non-volcanic, non-Bokoblin camp version. From here, we are now going to make our way to the sky and we have two side quests to do. Isn't that so exciting? Okay, we have two side quests that we need to do, and both of them are going to be giving us five, five grab to two crackles each for the total of 80 in the entire game. So first, we're going to go to Skyloft to the Knights Academy, upstairs back to Botanist Professor Olin, and he has a quest bubble. And he's going to say, hey, I know you've been down in the surface. Have you seen any crazy plants there? Try to find me some. And Fee's like, hey, do you want to find a plant? And I'm like, yeah, sure. We're going to be going to Farron and dropping down at the viewing platform. Where you're going to definitely notice there's a whole lot less monsters right now, which isn't that so nice. We're just back to like the birds who were hanging out before. Anyways, we're going to run up here and up this log. And you probably remember here, this is where actually we got our last uh, tad tones. 
And over here is gonna be a Kikwi. It's Ulu. <laughs> I should have been hiding out so long. My shoulders are stiff. What shoulders? How rude. I do have shoulders. They're just not very pronounced. And he's saying, hey, I know that there's no monsters right now, but I know that they're going to come back. I want to find a safe place that I'm never going to be bothered again. And I say, I know a place that's in the sky. And Ula is going to be like, I love the sky. And Fee's like, hey, I know someone who could lift things up. And then we call Scrapper and Scrapper's going to lift it up to the sky. Great. Let's head back to the sky. Now, here's a fun philosophical question. Are Kikwis actually plants? Are they animals? Does the Legend of Zelda game not define plants and animals in the same kingdom phylum class order family genus species that we do all of these questions remain unsolved and scrapper's just gonna drop it on the floor yep sure did this is unbelievable you found me an entire new plant species it's precisely what i wanted fascinating should it actually be classified as flora or fauna i mean plant or animal see exactly but wait there's more boom it's a bush too Olin is so happy about this and so grateful he gives you five grabbed at two crackles. This puts you at 75. Next, on to the Lumpy Pumpkin. And whilst approaching the Lumpy Pumpkin, we're gonna head out to the pumpkin field in the most graceful manner possible, apparently. And we're gonna be speaking to Kino over here. And she's like, hey, I need... And Kino is gonna say, if only there was someone who was really good at plowing the field. Yep, that's where that meme comes from. All right, so now we're gonna head over to Elden to go find someone who can plow. Volcano East. That's, that's where you wanna go, great. Volcano East. We're gonna hop down here to this airstream and we're going to head inside. Make sure you do a run. That way you can go into the floaty position. And upon landing, boom, we're gonna speak to this guy over here. It's gold! It's the one only character that I gave a voice to in the entire game. You didn't think I would give a voice to someone we would never see again. It's gold, the, the king of the magmas. So we meet again, eh? I, th I gotta thank you for your help last time. See, I've been searching for new treasure spots, but I can't find a single bit of treasure. Maybe I'm just getting woozy from working so long in the heat. Me, sometimes I wish I could find a job that really played to my strengths here. Something to be a cool climate, then I'd be set. I know a place. Oh, you know a place out of work. All right. And it's in the sky. I love the sky. Where do I sign up? I'm telling you, I'm in. Let's do this here thing. Thanks, V. And while we are here, we can actually get one of the four dowsing abilities that the second upgrade for our sword should give us. We're going to head straight down. I got rid of all of the pie pups. And right here, this magma is the guy that we need to speak to which is next to the treasure chest that we unlocked much earlier in the game. His name is Kobol. And Fee's gonna be like, hey, now you can douse for rupees. Neat. Now that we unlock dowsing for rupees and we have gold behind us, let's head over back to the Lumpy Pumpkin. I think this is the last time we see Scrapper and he does a mission for us or something. Send my best to Fee. Bye forever. Yeah, you found someone, didn't you? Wait a second, this isn't a person. So you're saying that this mole is going to plow this patch for me? Come on, are you seriously trying to get me to work on a field all day? Is this why you haul me all the way up here to the sky? Well, good luck, Mr. Mole Man. What? But you, well, I suppose, I guess I could give it a try. Hey, so what do you think? Wow, look at that, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you think? Well, it's nothing really. Rooting around in the dirt's a child play for us magmas. Yeah. Wow, one more time, please. Again, again. Oh, yeah, here I go. I'm so grateful that you brought this lovely guy to help me. I'm going to ask him to help with all sorts of things. I, I hope you pay him at least. And there we go. That's the last grab to two crackles. And now is a moment that we've been waiting for. The real true side story, the real B story to the entire game. It's time for us to go visit Uncle Bats, present to him all of the grab to do crackles in the game so that he can become a real boy, just like Pinocchio. First, it's time for the 70 grab to two crackles reward, which is a gold ruby and then another gold ruby. Oh, you're back. And it does appear you've gathered more gratitude crystals. Oh my, you've gathered 80. If I'm not mistaken, that's all in the whole wonderful world. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Please accept this final gift with all my gratitude. The Tycoon Wallet. 
It can store 9,000 rupees. This is an embarrassingly small token of my gratitude, but I hope it will be useful to you. Oh dear, with this I now have all the gratitude crystals I require to become human. I wonder if I'll really be able to make the transformation. My heart is a flutter. It's... Uh. Go! Well, how do I look, my dear friend Austin J? Oh, you didn't even say it. I can tell from the look of sheer astonishment on your face. My appearance has changed so dramatically, you've been struck speechless, haven't you? Allow me to thank you. There's simply no word in your language to describe how grateful I am for your help. I'm deeply touched. From now on, I plan to live happily with everyone else, not as a monster, but as any other person. I'm very confused as to what is his eyes? And, and, is it, are, are his eyes closed? Are these his eyelids? Is the, the white part of his eyes just skin colored? I don't know exactly, but he's a real boy. Isn't that right, Batro? Hang on, hang on, stay still. I, I, I want to get something for, for the thumbnail. Thanks, fan. Oh, and Fee says we can now search for gratitude crackles. Oh, that was that was one of the things. That was the fourth of the things. Okay, well that's not going to be helpful anymore. Well, I guess it's time for us to continue on with the story now that we've completed all of the side quests in the entire game. And we're going to head over to Lineru. Okay, now we are going to head down to the West Desert, and the same way that we went to the harbor where there was that little mine intersection, we're going to be heading right back there. Remember where that Goron was digging much earlier in the game? Hey, is that you? Over here, nice timing, I've been meaning to look for you. Come on over here. Hey look, it looks like you made a little hole. Nice to see you. Say, have you ever found the secret flame you were looking for? Really, you did, great. I was pretty curious about it, so spill all the details. I see. So after that adventuring, you finally found it. I have to say, that's pretty amazing. You're not the only one. I found out some more about the legend of the three dragons. The news is going to blow your mind. I found out that there is indeed a hidden area beyond here. There is a narrow path that I cannot fit through without losing any pounds. My theory is that probably there's a thunder dragon down there, so go find the thunder dragon. Great, he's down here. Let's go. Oh, I need to bomb this. You know, for someone who said that they cleared a path, they seem to have not really cleared a path. Just saying. On the other side of here, there's a thing too? Oddly enough, it seems that drawing a circle on certain walls will produce something around. Thanks. Hey, whoa, it's a whole brand new area. This is the Lineru Gorge. Legend tells of a dragon loyal to the goddess living in this area. If you can see over there, I don't think he's doing too well. Activate Burb statue. Yeah, as you can clearly see, he's not doing too well. And you can see that he was tied up. Why was he tied up? Chained up. And look down there, it's something shiny. Let's send out the beetle, go investigate. It's a small key. Neato. Don't worry, Mr. Dragon, I'm gonna figure out how to use this small key. I'm sorry for walking through your vertebrae. From here, we can use our beetle to grab this bomb and drop it on these rocks. Let's hop on over and unlock this door with the key. We have some pea hats. You know what to do with those. Oh, it's a sand cicada. That's like a silver rupee just sitting on the wall. Nice. Oh, there's two more sand cicadas. Nice. Okay, over here is going to be a time shift stone. Let me talk to you. See how this entire area is just one big old circle? That's that's what we're gonna do. It's essentially an escort mission, except he's escorting you. You are now the escort. And this minecart is an automated minecart that's gonna start moving on its own. I said it's gonna start moving on its own. Hey, you. Oh, I speak to him and then it starts moving on its own. Got it. There are many monsters from practice extreme caution. Bye forever. And there's a switch on the floor to open the door. Okay, next room. We have a whole bunch of Deku Babas and some electric Bokoblins and also some sand frogs. I don't think I have to fight these. This one, yes, because he's blocking the switch to the door. In the next room, uh, oh yeah, we have these little passageways that are going to be built and we have two enemies that are going to be resurrected. 
If we look to the right of the exit, there's gonna be some vines that we can climb on. Let go and open the switch. In the next room, we have some larger platforms, and this is going to be partially climbing and partial temporary platforms. Oh, that's a bad guy. He came out of nowhere. Oh, I don't actually have to fight him. Oh, and it stopped right there. Claw shot. Yep. And that will do the switch. Now we have to claw shot to some new vines. I'm so happy that there's a camera that we can move and you can see things ahead of you. Watch out for the air vents. Unable to progress any further because the minecart is not going to go any further. We're now going to hook shot up. And when we drop down is the switch to the door behind us. This area is filled with keys, but as the time stone approaches them, they're not going to exist anymore, which is pretty neat. So you could just claw shot over freely because obviously anywhere that the claw shot is, is going to be in the past times where the keys are not allowed to live. We end with the vines and we hop down. When we see you pull up bar, we can whip it. These fun enemies. Not really enemies, they're just obstacles. Ow. And I feel like they're always present in Zelda games. But not till like the very end. Let's whip across here. Make sure we don't land in sand. The next room has a whole lot more of these. And you can use the minecart to block you. Or you just time yourself well. Stand in the middle of them. Not really that hard. Okay, for this last little bit here, we're going to be running up here, grabbing the stamina fruits on the walls. And then we're able to run up and grab this. Or just whip it. Which brings us to a giant labyrinth room, filled with a bunch of enemies that you don't need to defeat. But you do need to walk around the circle. As long as you avoid them, you're fine. This one, Beemos, we definitely do have to defeat. Perfect. I actually went low on hearts on purpose. That way I could have Fee give me the option to douse for them. I don't plan on ever dowsing for it. I just want to, you know, have that screen as full as I can. And what better place for me to lose all my hearts than dealing with electric enemies, right? And uh, after that crazy horrible labyr labyrinth room, we are pretty much all set. And with the minecart being stuck, we're going to take out the tough beetle. Right there, visibly, is the last goddess cube of the entire game. We're going to have our beetle take care of these here rocks. And after the platform is there, you can just run to the middle. You're going to have a cutscene when this thing finally approaches and approaches the middle of the room. Middle of the platform? It's not really a room. And look, it's the dragon who's all chained up and he doesn't look like he's doing too hot, especially how he leads with cough, cough. I haven't had a visitor like you in a while. You're a human, aren't you? You must have some reason for coming this far. What is it? Oh, I see. You're Austin J. Hold on now. Didn't I just say you came from the skies? You must have been the hero chosen by the goddess. Well, isn't that something? I must apologize. I really can't help you. I can't really sing right now because I'm super sick and I'm about to die. That's literally what he's telling you. And he's talking about over there, the plant of life. If he had just one fruit from the plant of life, he would be okay. Let's blow away this and reveal a time stone. Let's see what this tree looked like a thousand years ago. Oh, it was just a little sapling. Now is our opportunity to hop down, activate the 27th goddess cube of the game. Beautiful. And now we get to dig up the life tree sapling. So now you've probably realized that there's a way that we can grow this tree. Uh, Groose alluded to it, and I kind of pointed it out. There's that little tiny hole inside of the sealed grounds. Now we're just going to head through the gate of time. And is like, you're back? What, what, what are you doing back here? We're going to head on over here. We're going to put the sapling in. And we're going to leave. Coming back for you, boo. Let's head back through the gate of time. And boom, the tree grew. Which, you know, we're breaking all of the rules of time travel. Knock into the tree, gather the fruit. And let's go bring it to the Thunder Dragon. Bye, Groose. Hey, hello there. Is this something you need? 
Yeah, I grew the thing. You know, the thing you just told me about that didn't grow? I grew it, because, you know, time travel. Oh, is that what I think it is? You brought it here for me, didn't you? And now we're going to do this Olympic event. Into the dragon's mouth. Down the hatch. Zinga ding ding. I expected an electric dragon to say nothing less. Oh, you've done it, boy. I could feel the fruit's energy surging through me. It's exhilarating. I feel like a proper dragon again. Just because I have eternal life doesn't mean I can't get mighty sick. Thanks to you, boy, this old dragon will keep on charging a while yet. I owe you a big thank you, so allow me to perform a moving rendition of my part of the Song of the Hero. Yay. And now we learned that part of the Song of Hero. Okay, so Lanayru has a thing now. Uh, Fee's like, hey, we should definitely return to the sky. But hear me out. Lanayru now has something, I think it's called the Lightning Round. Very appropriate name, right? And he has two options here. You get to relive past experiences. You get to go to battle, and then you have to battle all the bosses of the game. You can only bring in your shield, and you're limited on the items that you have, but you do have the fully upgraded Master Sword, so the bosses get defeated faster. Or you can go to the Silent Realm and replay all of the Silent Realms that you've unlocked so far, and then there's like a time trial for them, and then you win Rare Treasure if you do it. You have to complete four of the bosses for a piece of heart, eight of the bosses for a Hylian Shield, and at 10 of 10 bosses at the current point in time, you get three rare treasures. And after you come back, after you've, you know, completed the game, you can replay for all 12 bosses for, and if you win all 12 bosses, he fills your wallet, all 9,900 rupees. I am going to be doing that in a separate video. I mean, honestly, four of them, I could do four right now. There's a stool right here, I'm gonna sit down. The nice part about battle is that you get to choose what boss you would like to fight first. So if there's someone that you have trouble with, um, I recommend going to them first and, you know, you're not allowed to recover hearts between these unless you find hearts on the ground somewhere, right? And if you choose the middle, you get a choice of all the middle bosses. The beginning is all the beginning bosses, and later on is all of the final chapter bosses that we're currently in. The only later on boss that you currently have access to is Imprisoned 3. Honestly, I have the most trouble with Garahim 2. Actually, if I'm only doing four, there's a chance he won't even be called on, so I'm just gonna do Imprisoned 3, because I know I could fly through that one without any damage. Make sure to have your shield equipped when you begin this. Start. Gee, I feel like we just did this battle. Groose is all ready to go. We're gonna run up. Groose, pop a bomb on him. We're gonna come on over, do a good jump on him. Oh, he almost knocked me off too. Good thing he didn't. And now he's gonna do the floaty thing. Goose is gonna let me bomb him again. He's gonna fall right down to the middle. We're gonna run over to his head. Three hits. He's gonna push it back out, be very upset. Regrow his spinny thing. Goose's bombs are unavailable. There's some hearts here in case I need them. I mean, honestly, maybe you'd be better off doing a fight that doesn't have any hearts available. Let's get in. He's gonna shoot me over to his head. Thank you. And done. Minute 21 seconds. Lanayru is going to say how much of a good job I did. You get rupees every time that you beat a boss for the first time, and you get rupees if you improve upon your time on that boss. He tells you your current reward, and he tells you what the next reward is going to be. Oh, what is this? Imprisoned. Oh, it's imprisoned one. I could fly through this one. I 
I don't understand why it always makes me run down to the bottom between his legs. Like, I was already, like, more than halfway up there. I know that he's not going to buck me off. And he should be landing somewhere about here. Oh, much earlier than I thought he would. And I do believe that freezes me in the air. Oh, it did not freeze me in the air. Instead, it progressed me going down. That's fine. I could just do this. Because again, this is the first time you fought him, so all the toes are super weak and just one hit of the sword and they're all gone. But honestly, I'm going for no damage over fast times right now anyways. This looks good. Nice. Minute 57. Beautiful. And what are they putting me in now? Garahim 2. Okay. Huh. I just realized that my, uh... My two hearts are missing because, you know, my adventure pouch is locked. Okay, follow my hand, follow my hand, follow my hand, follow my hand. You done following my hand, dog? Okay, he does the tongue stuff and whips out his swords. Minute 19. Not bad at all. Okay, and if I complete the next one, I get a piece of heart. Fantastic. What is this? Garahim 1? He's gonna run away, do tongue stuff, whip out a sword. I'm just gonna go around and collect a few hearts, because I want to finish this with full hearts. Because it'd be kind of embarrassing to get to get Garahim 2 no damage, but Garahim 1. I have hearts missing. One sixteen, very nice. And I'm going to choose to quit because now I get myself the piece of heart. Fantastic! That is the last piece of heart in the entire game, and completion of the twentieth container. Boom. We are going to come back for the shield later. And before we wrap up this entire video, there is one last thing we have to do in the sky. The two new goddess chests. We need to go finish those, which luckily both of them are on this one tiny little island right here in Thunderhead. And here we go. Our one last little island in the sky, which is a burrow spot. We have one of these guys to deal with, but luckily we're on a dead end, so he can't hurt us ever. And we could come here, we could tease him. He's gonna look both ways, he's gonna see us, he's gonna run toward us, he's gonna cancel out. Boop. Additional boop. With him defeated and out of the way, it is time for us to head to the two different corners, which contain a small quiver. Super helpful this late in the game, just gonna say. And also, an empty bottle. This is the fifth bottle of the game. Great. And with that being collected, that's now every piece of heart, every goddess cube, every chest, every gratitude crystal, and every medal in the game, every heart possible, and we are done with the collect-a-thon. And now it's just going to be story stuff that we're going to be picking up in the next episode of my walkthrough. And if you found this helpful and if you've achieved all the things, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. And you know what? If you've seen the walkthrough and the walkthrough is help helpful, do me a favor, just scroll down a little bit and just check the subscribe button and just make sure that you're already subscribed because sometimes YouTube likes to unsubscribe people or you might think you are already subscribed. So just, just look at the button for me. That's all I want you to do, that's it. If you want to subscribe after looking at the button, that's on you. Great, till next time, Austin John out.